and we have two aim objectives basically self development who uh, members who join us we work towards the development of their professionally as well as spiritually and secondly using the time skills and money for uh, the psf members of the psf members we have the objective of giving back to society with a through a community service right and the wing we have our work divided into five wings basically service to professionals which are wearing the master class kits jobs and career guidance startup and consulting as well as core social services and lastly we have net networking and engagement engaging events for our members some of the engagement topics that we have been covering over time are professionals and community what are the roles and uh, responsibility right coding for kids community and finance parenting spiritual development sessions health and lifestyle being a key topic for our members and political scenario and uh, the work for professional so these are glimpses of all the sessions or some of the sessions that we have been doing uh, during lockdown the sessions were online and uh, post the lockdown we have started them offline again uh, service to professionals which is a uh, very focused wing for members who join us and the development of them we, uh, we have three key uh, parameters here and three key uh, programs here first being we offer discounted course for professionals some of the courses that we have been offering and uh, members have uh, benefited from them are on the screen right now psf master class are basically technologies that are coming up fast and quickly and uh, are in vogue and we enable our experts from professional from psf members to come up ahead and uh, share their experience on those uh, similarly we have one day workshops entirely one day workshop which has yet to be started and we have courses like full stack java course which is currently ongoing so uh, uh, just a bit about psf master class these are some of the things that we have picked up and from these these the, from these six themes one of the themes is ai and machine learning of these machine of this theme we are in the in uh, today in a session on machine learning so the task is for you all is to enroll share with others and offer your services if you can as mentors uh, some of the glimpses of the physical master class that we have conducted at mira road madanpura washi abhi mumbai um, on data science data visual data visualization machine learning uh and the service to professionals again what we have done is we have started and launched the full stack java course this is in collaboration with informa technologies and the trainers are from informa technologies the benefit uh, is that the highlights are it's an online course uh, conducted by the instructor two and a half hour session on sundays uh, only 18 sessions per day uh, wherein full stack development is uh, taught uh, weekly assignments are given to the attendees and few of the attendees have the chance of getting absorbed as at informa technologies as full time employees also because full time informa technologies are in need of full stack uh, uh, developers uh, we have jobs and career guidance as the wing wherein we upload jobs on our web page psfmumbai.org jobs where you can filter and select the job that you want to apply in case you have jobs that you want featured there please share with us on our email id and uh, these are verified jobs shared by our uh, members also few of the hr consultants who share the job with us uh, mentoring the mentees is a program which will come and we will be uh, in next sessions you will be hearing on more about on this startup and consulting again for professionals who want to start their own startup and they want uh, how to write a business plan what all to be looking forward to we have tie ups with uh, uh organizations like rifa chamber of commerce and if and iiccb and therefore uh, we can offer you expertise on the same on the core social services front we have uh, been uh, doing a lot of stuff to, with our members support um, naming some of them like covid support ramadan kit anti drug campaign blanket distribution during the winters and two of the key projects are kafalat and neki basket kafalat is basically we have been supporting kids for their education for their sponsorship of their fees school fees and alhamdulillah for the set in uh, starting from 24 students we have now this year supported 150 odd students across mumbai sadqat uh, and zakat are uh, uh, collected for this throughout the year and 
we enable we become the middleman we kind of become the bridge wherein the donor and the uh, uh, students are connected we do the background check and we connect the donor with the child through a website which is educatechild.in uh, going forward these are the kids from 132 166 odd kids last year surveyed 132 uh, checks distributed to these kids and 10 students from the tuition classes at malwani also supported similarly neki bas is the pilot project uh, currently running in uh, at jogeshwari with a community kitchen with jogeshwari best we are the beneficiaries of 75 families are getting food packets uh, twice weekly you can come up ahead and sponsor 10 packets each packet of 50 rupees and become a uh, bigger donor become sponsor of 100 packets uh neki basket the second pilot in progress is a dry ration where when we have a app and website ready vendors are setting currently being onboarded and the needy identification mapping will be done uh we have uh, people who join in also will be enthralled to know that psf mumbai uh, conducts sports so we have uh, we booked up on cricket and football uh, currently cricket only and then we uh, the psf mumbai members come up together to Uh, meet up on PSF cricket. Uh, lastly, this is the uh, hierarchy of uh, PSF Mumbai members, chapter leads, executive team, wherein you can uh, volunteer yourself to become a executive thing, executive team member, and the core team of twelve people. And I am a city president, uh, uh, addressing you guys together now. This is basically uh, so our ask is to join the executive team, lead from the front. up ahead choose any wing that you wish to aspire to uh, donate and contribute towards uh, give your time and skills and inshallah you will see great uh, work coming up ahead uh, you can uh, psm mumbai always is open for donations like any other ngo because money is the one uh, feature where you can help uh, even silently uh, this is the link which you can will i'll just share in the chat box to join as psf member you can fill in uh, the link uh, uh, while uh, attending the session as well uh now we'll stop the uh this is introduction about psf mumbai uh, we'll hand over the session to brother murshid uh as you might be aware in the uh, uh the creative that was floated brother murshid is also a psf member he has he had joined us in the very beginning 2017 onward he is a techy uh by design by choice by his own uh, volition and he's a good one uh, i'll assure you and uh, he has close to 12 13 years of 13 years of experience he is working at ubs as a associate vice president associate president and uh, he is good at his work you will you will you will, you will know that he is good at his work please believe me uh, he has done lot of sessions for us psf master class as well and uh, and behind the brain child also of uh, full stack java course alhamdulillah uh, over to you murshid and please confirm to me once you are able to share uh, the screen yourself Yes, Agarwal, yeah, yeah, boy, for that kind introduction. Uh, let me share the screen first and just confirm. Is it visible, the screen, to everyone? Screen is visible. Okay, yes, Agarwal. Okay, let's start. Uh, so this is a PPT. Uh, is this PPT visible? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, boy. Yes, visible. People okay. uh, and participants also can uh, uh, confirm on the chat box. Yeah, yeah. But one thing, right? I am completely visualizing my screen. I am not able to view the chat as of now. So I'll continue with the session, right? So if someone has anything, just uh, please do let me know, right? I'll just keep this chat box on the side. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, yeah, yeah, I have already introduced uh, myself, right? I have been working in the as an associate director in UBS. Uh, I am working in the AI data analytics division, and uh, I have completed my engineering from Sabu Siddiqui in 2008, and I have recently completed my M Tech from Bits Pilani in data science and engineering. Uh, apart from that, I'm also the founder and the MD of my own firm uh, that is Falcon Spark Infotech, and that's into primarily into training and uh, apps development, website development. no uh, why this this sessions investor class is basically uh, uh, people with the right skills and who want to share knowledge and who wants to make them aware of the new technologies which are coming in and uh, and personally myself i like to demystify things i like to 
explain things in a very simple way, uh, which uh, which I can, which I have understood and try to make them learn uh, in a very simplified manner. Right, so that's the reason. So uh, with all this hype of machine learning which is going around, uh, I thought let me try to let me try to summarize this in a very simple way and uh, try to come up with some 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 solution where people can at least get one percent increment in their va value for the machine learning. Right. Let's go ahead. So, what is machine learning? Uh, there are a lot of lot of definitions, lot of things are going around uh, with respect to the machine learning, data science, and everything. So, so machine learning is uh, um, an application of artificial intelligence that provides the system the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. So, I, I I always use this analogy when I try to explain this machine learning. Uh, so, for example, if you want to if you want to calculate a simple interest, right? Uh, what do we need? We need a principal, a number of years, and rate of interest, and we divide by hundred. That is, you are programmatically telling the computer uh, that this is the way you have to calculate the uh, the uh, simple interest. Uh, but uh, how does machine learning comes here, right? Uh, so what's different with machine learning is uh, if you just give the principal the number of years and rate of interest and also give the actual value of the interest to it. So what will happen is um, the computer itself will come up with a pattern that will say, okay, with this PNR value, this will be the simple interest. So you don't have to explicitly program the computer. All you have to do, you have to give the computer the uh, the input value and the output value so that comes under the supervised machine learning will come and see in a later stage but you have to tell the computer this is the input value and this is the output value and you have to do it at a very large scale and then finally the computer will understand the pattern within the input value and will come up with the output value which is more or less similar to the output which you actually programmatically program the computer so it's basically you're putting some artificial intelligence to the system. Uh, it's not the actual intelligence which humans holds. It's an artificial intelligence. And uh, and behind that, what works, right? So today in the session, what we're going to cover is uh, uh, we are, uh, after going through this PPT of uh, 10 minutes, uh, we'll go some hands-on session uh, with learning some algorithms. And not only algorithms, we'll try to see how that algorithm works, what is the mathematics behind that algorithm, and how to program that into Python. Right. So Python is one of the medium where, through which you can do this uh, machine learning things. There are other languages as well. You can work with Python. Or you can work with the machine learning algorithms. Uh, but Python is being one of the most versatile and it works perfectly with these machine learning libraries. OK, so. Here we have. A, OK, so machine learning, right? As you can see in the screen, the machine maths and statistics, a combination of math and statistics and computer science is a machine learning. So if you know the statistics and the maths, and if you know the programming language, so you will come across this machine learning thing, right? And if you know the business, and if you know maths and statistics, then you can do the data analysis part of it. And what about normal computer science and the business domain? It's a normal traditional software where you actually go and program the computer, saying that this is a this is a requirement and this is how the output should be. And a culmination of all three things will come as a data science where everything comes into picture, right? So data science, we have already covered one of the master classes before. And this this session is specifically only between maths, maths and statistics and computer science, the culmination of that. So there are a lot of uh, um, there are a lot of people are not able to differentiate between what is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then there is also deep learning and what's neural networks. So this is how this picture depicts that is completely right. So you have an artificial intelligence, uh, a complete broad spectrum, and inside that you have a machine learning, and then you have a deep learning inside that, which is a specialized part of the machine learning. And inside that you have these neural networks, convolution neural networks, recurrent neural networks. Now there are three types of machine learning. Uh, as you can see in the screen, you have a uh, supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and reinforcement learning. So supervised machine learning, as the name itself suggests, right? Uh, you have them. There has to be some supervisor uh, for the computer, and you have to tell the computer this is the input and this is the output. And based on this, the computer understands. And if you give a new input value, it will try to see the pattern from the input value and come up with the output value. Right, because it has already learned. It has supervised. It's a supervised learning, right? So, yeah, I try to get one picture for this. Uh, you can see, right? Uh, this robot has been trained, saying that a cube has six sided a square, and then the robot understands. Says, "I understand," right? And uh, there is another 
type of machine learning that is unsupervised machine learning, uh, which is completely data driven, right? You can see in the bracket here, it's a data driven. So a huge amount of data has been given. You do not, you do not provide the input and the output value to it. Uh, the algorithm itself comes up with the classification of the data. So as you can see here in the example, the robot, uh, we have provided two cubes and two cups here and the robot itself classified the two cubes and the two cups here, right? So no one has trained this model, right? All you have done is you have given a huge amount of data to this robot and the you, robot has come up with this classification. Now there is no magic, let me tell you, this is all pure statistics which runs behind these algorithms. Uh, all they have to do is they have to give a huge amount of data and, you, and if you are aware about the mathematics and statistics behind it, uh, you will understand how these things work, right? The classification. The third part is a reinforcement learning, right? This, if you can see in the bracket, learn from errors. And there's a third part of it, right? So what this uh, robot is trying to do is trying to fit this into this particular slot. So this circular thing is trying to put into this square and it says, no, it's not fitting. So it's learning from the error. And if you try to put into this, it will fit. So all your uh, self-driven cars, right, are based on this reinforcement learning where they are built on the penalized model, right? If you're not doing correct, it's going to get penalized you. If you're doing it good, then it's going to give you a reward. So based on that, that's the reinforcement learning. In today's session, we are going to be learning only the supervised learning, right? Supervised learning, we are not going to touch unsupervised and we're not going to touch the reinforcement. We're going to cover the supervised learning model. So as I mentioned, right, uh, now supervised, unsupervised, and there are different sections under the su supervised learning as well. You have a classification and you have a regression. And uh, classification is basically, it classifies things into binary, whether it's, uh, uh, let's say for example, uh, um, whether the, uh, uh, it, there is a fraud or not, whether it has a cancer or it's not a cancer, it, those kind of classification. Regression is something where you typically deal with numbers. Uh, if you want to predict some numbers, uh, what will be the number, uh, the regression, the continuous number that comes under regression. Under unsupervised learning, you have this clustering, uh, dimension reduction, generalization, and association. Clustering, as I mentioned, uh, you give a huge amount of data to the system. The algorithm itself comes up with uh, uh, with a pattern, uh, saying that, okay, I classify this uh, sections into a different section. I classify this amount of items into a different section. And that comes under clustering, right? Split up a similar, similar clothing into stacks, right? One of the examples. Association, this is one of the unsupervised learning. We're going to see it later in the slide. And dimension reduction, that is generalization. So uh, let's say this is the regression. Uh, for example, we are learning this supervised, this is classification, this is regression, if you can see here. So regression, uh, you have multiple functions to work on. Uh, I'll explain you this, uh, why this line and why this particular plotting has been done. So let's say you want to predict the car price and if you want to predict the salary and all those things. So there are different algorithms in the machine learning which runs behind. So the famous ones, the popular ones are linear regression and k-nearest neighbors. So we are going to touch both of them today and we're going to code both of them and understand how they work. And we also see how, what are the mathematics behind this uh, algorithms. And there's another algorithm as well, polynomial regression. Uh, we're not going to touch this today. And this is how it gets plotted. If you plot this particular onto the X and Y axis, this is how it looks like, right? Uh, similarly, if you plot this X and Y axis, you will get a linear regression with a straight line. Uh, you will understand this straight line concept uh, in the later when you're going to do the hands-on session. Um, this is simple self-explanatory slide. Uh, it's a classification if you do classify things uh, uh, in between the different objects based on the data which is given to this. Now, these are the clustering program. Uh, this is, this comes under unsupervised learning. And uh, th th these are the basic uh, popular algorithms which are used. K-means clustering, mean shift, db scan. Uh, as I mentioned, these are unsupervised. You do not tell explicitly the computer uh, what is the input and what is the output value. You just give a dump of data to the computer. Uh, and the computer comes up uh, and the algorithm comes up with a uh, clustering, right? Uh, this is how I have clustered. And there are various algorithms. Uh, I have just listed three of them here. There are many algorithms which are there which helps to class, uh, cluster the similar items. And reinforcement learning, uh, where you have seen that you have an action and then you have a reward. They are self-driving cars and everything it depends upon this particular uh, thing on the reinforcement learning. So basically, I just wanted to give you the brief overview of the complete spectrum of machine learning and which part of the section we are going to cover today. So we are going to cover the uh, supervised learning 
under supervised learning, we are going to cover the regression part where we are going to predict the numbers, right? We are not going to classify things, uh, but we are going to predict the number, right? So one of the example is the salary prediction, right? So this is a very simple example. And, uh, and the reason of taking a simple example, because uh, we are going to do the exact same steps, which also works with the complex model as well, right? The complex data set. Now, uh, this, this is how exactly in the industry also it works, right? It is not something different. The only thing is the source of data sets, uh, the source of data source is different. Probably you can attach it to the Oracle or SQL server, or you can take it from the big Excel data set as well. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is I have tried to, to took the derivative of that and try to show you how exactly this algorithm works. So as I mentioned in the linear regression, we are going to touch two algorithms. That is uh, the linear regression and the uh, K nearest neighbors. Um, if you are beginner, just sit with me, just relax and just see how it works, right? And uh, I have already given a PDF document which all software and it will be installed to work on this. If you have done it and if you are logging through your desktop, you can do it along with me. And uh, if you're using it, uh, using it with your mobile, just sit back and relax and watch it through. And if you already know this, just think it's a refresher, then it will be help you as well, right? So what is the case here? Here we have an experience and here we have a salary column. So experience is from zero to 10 and uh, these are the different salary. And suppose uh, we want to predict the salary for uh, the uh, guy within 11 years of experience, right? So that's the reason here's a question mark. And this is our data set, right? So what we are going to tell to our algorithm, uh, we are going to tell our algorithm is a guy with a zero year of experience has 8,000 salary. With one year of experience, it has 10,000. And this is how the algorithm is going to get trained. And then we're going to ask uh, the machine that, uh, tell me the salary of the guy with an experience of 11 years. And then it should predict and you should give us some value. Now that value will be available here. I have just plotted the same thing on the X and Y axis and you can see here and you have this line as well, right? In the previous slide, I told you that uh, I'll explain you the concept of this particular line and then it will make more sense to you. Okay. So the next step is uh, what we'll do is we'll start with um, Anaconda. So in the, in the PDF, I have already told you, right? Uh, that we have to install this Anaconda software. It's totally fine if you are not able to catch up with me, uh, but uh, ensure there's a recording which is going to, which is currently happening. Uh, you can also follow the recording later on. And if you are there and catch up with me, it's a little better. You can do it by at the same time as I'm doing. So currently what I've done is I've launched Anaconda here. Now what is Anaconda? Anaconda is a tool, uh, is a open source tool which is available from uh, the, uh, for the data science scientist because it is a it holds multiple tools in it right it's not a single software it has a lot of other softwares inbuilt in it and you can launch those softwares from this particular anaconda software so instead of installing multiple software on your computer you can install only one and then you can launch different tools of data science from here itself as you can see i have launched this uh, there are a lot of applications here right Data spell command, data explore, IBM Watson. Um, so one way would be you can install each one of them individually, or what we can do is we can install only one software that is Anaconda. And once you have installed that, you have get a lot of tools for data science available here. So today what we're going to use, we are going to do is use two tools. One is Jupyter Notebook and one is PyCharm Community. So Jupyter Notebook is just, uh, you can see all your Python or uh, your R, your Ruby, your different environments can be available on the notebook itself. You don't have to explicitly go and install uh, the Python on your machine and make it work, right? You have everything available on your machine itself. Let me check the chats in between. Okay. Okay, Abdul Rahman is asking, I'm just going through the chats just uh, in between. Google Colab, yes, uh, Abdul Rahman, Google Colab is also one of the options where you can go and uh, explore these options. Jupyter Node is one of them. Google Colab, the thing is uh, sometimes if the machine is busy, if, if you have a heavy data set, it doesn't work. But if you have a machine, you're running it locally, it will help you better. Okay, nothing else. Okay, I can close this. So now what you have to do, you have to go into data science. Um, I have created one of the folders. You can just create one of the folders here and you can put all your projects here and create the data science uh, uh, notebooks. So let's say, uh, let's create a Python 3. So this is Python version 3. You have Python version 2.7 as well, but we are going to work with the Python 3. 
funnel now first and foremost uh, now what we have to do is we have to create our data set which we are going to work on as you can see in the slide right we have to have some data set like this with an experience and a salary so i have already done that uh, let me check here yeah okay it's available here so you have uh, you have the salary column uh, experience column and the salary column here so sal experience is from 0 to 10 and they have a different salary available here okay so uh, so we have to read this data set into the machine so for that there is a library called pandas in python um See, the reason of using this Jupyter Notebook is because you do not want to install Python explicitly. You do not want to install any ID explicitly and make the job run. Uh, you have everything available here. Uh, you can directly run and you can visually see the output of the code. So I have run this code and the code has compiled. If, I not, if it has not given you any error, it, it means it is working perfectly fine. So let's say if I do something incorrect here, I think it, it should give me an error. So see, it has, it has given me an error, right? Uh, this PDA is not working fine. This model not found. So pandas is the right library which we are importing. And then after reading pandas, what we have to do, we have to just read that particular data set, right? We have to read that data set. And for that, you just have to give a command read CSV. Python itself is very user-friendly language. Um, And once you have read the data set, you have to see whether the data set has been available in your machine or not. So what you have done uh, with this pd.read CSV, you have taken the entire data set into in memory currently because it's not lying there in the machine itself. And if you want to see what is happening in this data set, you can directly see it here, right? There is an experience and the salary column. So experience since I have told that I want to see only the first five rows, uh, it is showing me only the first five rows of the column, right? That is uh, from zero to five. Uh, now we have to split. Now, uh, now let's before doing this, right? Uh, let's say we have a situation where we don't have this particular entry, right? So in, in a data science project, uh, what happens is whenever you collect data, uh, many times it happens that a lot of data which which are incorrect, which are empty, which is not available. Then in that case, what you have to do, right? So let's say I have read this. And then again, when we try to see this particular, uh, let's say top six, yeah, um, I'm okay. I have not pasted it at the right place. Let me okay close this one. Users their data science. Okay, this is the one. I have removed this, so I think, but still it is reading the which one? Okay, let's just see that one. Read it and okay. let's go back a bit. This is something incorrect. Let me remove this. I don't know why it is behaving like this, but let me check it again. Um, run this particular thing and see the sixth part. Okay. Uh, even though I have changed the CSV here, it's not able to overwrite it. So let me close this. Okay, save. Okay, now it is doing. But I want to do it at a different place, right? I want to do it at users. Yeah. Um, data science at this particular pool. Okay, let me write it says here. Yeah. Okay, so you can see here, right? Uh, the fifth one has an NAN value. It does not have a value because we have removed it. Now, what to do in this case? Um, now there is an option you can. Uh, put some numbers there or you can remove this row completely. If you put some number, what we can put? Uh, one option is uh, you can put the mean of the rest of the numbers, right? Instead of uh, 
uh, you can say, okay, let's take this row as, let's take a mean of the other numbers and then put it here. And you can say that fill the NA values with what, you can fill the NA values with uh, the mean of this particular row. If you run this and again, if you copy this, you can see this 35,100 is a mean basically. If you take this particular Excel and if you take a sum of this salary and divide by 10, you will get 35,100, okay? Now this is what you have achieved. Um, so basically what I try to show you here is uh, whenever you get a data set in the real world as well, you wouldn't be able to uh, get the complete data set, right? So you have to fill in with some values. So this is what you call imputation here in data science uh, projects, uh, but you have to fill those values or either you have to remove it, right? Based on the conditions. So here in a small example, what we have done is we have removed one row and we have just tried to replace it with the mean of other values. And that is the value instead of removing that complete row. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you have to Can give it- Can you check the chat, Mushtaq? Okay. Yes, uh, Abdul Rahman, this is correct. We are doing some pre-processing to correct the data cleaning, right? Because we cannot want to, we do not want to ignore that particular row. We want to use that particular row. And uh, instead of ignoring that row completely, we are pre-processing the data and putting a mean value of that on the other rows. Okay. Now let's move ahead. Um, uh, now, what we have to do, we have to give a machine an input and we also have to give the machine the output, right? Why? Because we are working under the supervised machine learning and the, under regression. And if you remember the supervised machine learning, you have to tell the machine the input and the output value before so that the machine can derive the pattern from the input value and can also predict the output value with the new values, right? So now X will act as an input value for us and Y will act as an output value. So your experience is the X value for us because we have to give the experience to the machine and Y is the salary uh, will be the output value. But first we have to train the machine. When I say train the machine, we have to tell, okay, with zero years of experience, your salary, uh, the candidate salary is 8,000. With one year of experience, the candidate salary is 10,000. We are training the machine. And to, to do that, first we have to split that into X and Y. Now to achieve that in Python, you can easily do it by using this particular function of uh, iLock. Now, this is very simple to interpret. If you have any issues with Python, there is a good, very good documentation of pandas available uh, for Python. You can just go and see iLock. It will help you to do that. So it is index location. And uh, what I'm trying to say here is uh, I want the entire row. Uh, and But you just came me from 0 to, but the column would be only from 0 to 1. And I just need the values from here. And it got executed, as you can see. And then... For the Y values, you can see your df.iloc. I need the entire rows, but in this case, I need only the first column. And now in Python, it is a zero base index, right? Uh, so what will happen is uh, the first column is zero and the second column is one. And the second column is the salary column. So this Y will act as a salary and the first one act as an experience. Or double dot. It both worked. Now, if you want to check the output, you can just simply type here X and you will see, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. And for Y, you can just see you have 8,000 to 65,000 till salary is available. Now we are good. So we have split our values into two columns, that is X and Y. The next thing is we have to work uh, with uh, the uh, model, right? We have to train our model with this particular value. Now, keeping time into picture, I think I will be a little bit faster here. Uh, you just have to cope up and uh, later on when we have the 10 minutes connect on the question and answer, you can just ask those questions there. Now, what is this uh, thing? Uh, we have to learn, take it from sklearn. sklearn is one of the libraries in Python uh, and machine learning, which is all the algorithms has been written in this Kiket learn particular module. And in this case, we are going to use a linear model. And from the linear model, what we are going to import? Linear regression. Now, um, in Jupyter notebooks, if you don't remember the library, all you have to do is say tab and that will get autofill by itself. In a regression, and they say model.fit x, comma y. And uh, now at this particular stage, what we have done is we have initialized this particular linear regression as a model. This is called initialization. What I'm trying to say is I'm going to use more linear regression model. 
and here i'm trying to train the model when i say train the model this is my input and this is my output and the other training part has been done so it's got trained now our main goal was to predict the value right so what you have to do is say predict predict what uh, i want to predict the value for 11 right this was our use case if you remember in this slide uh, we have trained the model with zero uh, with the experience and the salary and we wanted the output for uh, experience 11 so now if you train the model uh, sorry i think there is an issue here okay so it has given some value to us right it says 71154.545454 so what model is saying if you have 11 years of experience you're going to have this salary now the question is how did we arrive to this particular point right how did the model come to know that it has to be 71154 what magic had happens between this all we have done is we have just given the experience and salary we have just trained the machine with x value and the y value and uh, the model has spit it out the uh, the actual uh, salary for the 11 years of experience now it is very simple uh, since we have used a linear regression uh, it has it has seen the pattern in the experience and the salary and it, ha and it has found the pattern and it's it has found the pattern of a linear linear line right so it has created a line for it right uh, internally internally it has created a line for it and if you remember from your ninth or 10th standard uh, mathematics uh, line has an equation right y is equal to mx plus c where m is a slope and c is the intercept now what is the slope and intercept here oh, that you can check if you can say model dot coefficient now what we are trying to do here is we have seen how the model works we have seen the model have also given us the predicted output but we are trying to understand how the model actually mathematically works so if you see the model coefficient right it is 6009 now this coefficient is the slope your m in your equation y is equal to mx plus c and uh, if you want to see the intercept the plus c part right then you have to say just insert a intercept that is five zero five four five four four nine so this is your c part c and this is your m part the slope part now now it's very easy right for the model it has got the slope it has got the intercept now all it has to do is it has to replace x in it so it has replaced 11 in it and it is it has got the value of y now what is y y is salary and what is x x is the experience now if you give any experience here you will get the output so internally what the model has done it has prepared an equation for itself right and that equation is y is equal to mx plus 3 for the linear line now you have the slope and you have the intercept and you also have the input value x now it has just to have to calculate this particular y now if you take a calculator Uh, what is our coefficient 6009 so y is equal to mx what is m oh, m is 6009.0909 right into 11 plus what we have to do the intercept part 5054 5054 point five four five four that is seven one one five four point five four five three you can see this seven one one five four five four five four basically it has just rounded one of the article but this is how the machine this is how the model work right this is what i want to show that there is no it's it's pure mathematics right and statistics here which is running behind the model and which comes up with the equation and it tries to predict the next value and this is how it predicted the next value for 11. okay now moving ahead right now this is what you have seen for the linear regression same thing um, as i told you in my previous in my slide right we are going to do this for another algorithm as well uh, where is my regression k nearest neighbor right this is a different equation this is a different algorithm and how it works is it works with your neighbors it check your neighbors and based on the neighbors it predict the values right again we are going to do but with a different algorithm right this algorithm has come up with the equation of straight line but this k nearest neighbor is working differently again uh, it is going to come from uh, the sk learn but this time it is not the linear model but this time is going to come from neighbors
I've just just put tab and you can go this. So key nearest neighbor regressor. I told you we are working with the supervised machine or supervised learning. Under that we are going to running with the regression. So you have a classifier as well and a regressor because since we are working with the regression, we are going to use regressor here. And then again, you have to fit the same X and Y. When I say X and Y is because the input and output value are training the model. And once you have trained the model, you say, I want to predict what's the output of this model, right? Again, let's say we want to predict the value for 11 and let's see what the value comes up. And this time it has comes up with 53,600. Right. So what happens differently in this particular algorithm? Let's see what's what happened here. We have seen it works on the y is equal to mx plus c. Uh, here you have to see how does this particular model works. Now this model works with neighbor, right? Let's say so uh, what happens is it looks at this particular neighbor and based on the number of neighbors you specify, it takes the average of that and it comes up with that number, right? Okay. So how do we show this? Let me show the this particular thing now the question comes now the question comes uh, what is that uh, how to identify the neighbors right now this is 35100 you remember we have filled the values uh, with the mean value and we want to predict the value for 11 here now the question comes uh, what is the neighbor for this 11 right now again coming back to your 900 mathematics um, if you if you if you're on the xy plane and if you find the distance between the two points, uh, you have this formula, right? X1 minus X2 the whole square plus X1 minus X1 minus X2 the whole square and take a summation of that and you take a square root. So that's basically is the, uh, the uh, what we know as Minkowski distance, right? Uh, let me show it to you. Uh, we have a simple example, let me check. So, it's a right? Uh, you can see here, right? It's a distance between the two. If you want to find a distance between the two points, you take a Minkowski distance. Now, why we need a distance? Because we want to find the neighbors. And why we want to find the neighbors? Because the algorithm works that way. Now, we want to check which point is near to this particular point of 11. I want to check which experienced guy is nearer to this point, but based on mathematics. So here we have only experience. Uh, there could be a case in a data set, you have multiple columns. So uh, that will act as a, a different vector points, right? Here you have to check for this particular 11, which is nearer. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to mimic the, um, we'll try to mimic the formula here itself. So we'll say square root of what? Square root of uh, this A13, minus uh, a2 and let's say it's a square right again the square okay. something wrong here okay no something wrong i have to do it something like this And this is how you come up with the different distances from 11. Now, all I did was uh, have taken the uh, the formula, right? And why I have taken the formula? Because uh, reason the nearest neighbors uses that particular formula of Minkowski distance. Uh, this is the one we are working on, right? Let me see whether I can see this. I'm just trying to see. No, okay, I'm not. Uh, ideally, when you go and put a tab here, you just see the complete method definition. But let's let's say it's not visible here. Let's say k nearest neighbor parameter. Right. Um, let's go to the documentation of scikit-learn. 
and see. Um, so this is a this is a Skagit Learn do documentation. And what I have done is I have just taken that particular uh, K nearest neighbor regressor and see what all what all parameter does it take. Now, if you can see, uh, it takes a distance, right? Metric, Minkowski distance. Now, as I mentioned, right, the Minkowski distance is a distance between the two points, and it has a formula. And that formula I've already shown it to you, right? It's a square root of the um, sum of the difference and square of those particular vectors. So I have done the same thing. I have put it on the Excel sheet. Now, this is the value which has come. And I think this are the nearest neighbors. Now, if you take this 17,000, this one, OK? OK, now let's check the output here. What is the output? OK, now if you just go and see the number of neighbors you want, where is that x yeah so here one of the parameter is n neighbors how many neighbors you want to find so let's say default is five i want number of neighbors to be three so all you have to go and change the method parameter and say i want to work with number of neighbors three so you have to run this again and the numbers changes here right because uh, you have changed the parameter here earlier it was default to five you have said i want to work only with three fifty eight thousand three 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 now, nearest neighbor for this two point is this three particular point. If you take this sum of this three point and you take a mean of that and then you arrive at this 58333. I hope it's visible to you guys. <clears throat> okay, 58333. So that's how the basically the the uh, the algorithm is also working. Uh, it has come up with this 58.333 because the number of neighbors we have defined as three. If you just change the number of neighbors to five, it will take the near, five nearest neighbors to work on. Now, this was with all respect to your um, KNN regression. Uh, again, the same thing. If you see this, uh, I have highlighted this uh, particular three salaries. And based on this, we have taken the output of the salary, right? And uh, this is one of the UI I have prepared for this. Uh, currently, I have, don't have the UI for this, but I have done another project completely. Uh, which uh, uses the UI model. I'll show you, I'll walk you through that as well. We'll come to the questions, uh, but before, uh, with respect to the time, let me show you that particular UI model, which I have done. So I hope my screen is visible. PyCharm is visible to all of you. Um, I just, in the chat, say yes or no. It will be fine. Okay, I got the confirmation from Abdul Rahman. So this was one of the projects which I have done on car price prediction. Um, this is a, just don't get into the details. Don't get overwhelmed with the code and everything. Uh, this is something uh, uh, we have taken the data set of car data set, which was available. It was a huge data set, which was uh, available on the internet. And based on the car, we wanted to predict it. Based on the different attributes of the car, we wanted to predict the, uh, the price of the car, right? So we wanted the machine learning model to work on this. And what we have done is, again, we have used a regression model. And uh, why regression? Because you have to predict the price, right? Price is a continuous value. It's not a classification whether the, whether the car is good or bad. It's basically you want to predict the price of the car. So uh, we have taken this data set and we have trained the model. And uh, let me show it to you. So I have done some more steps here, which was uh, which we have not covered today because the session time was restricted to one hour. Uh, probably in other master classes, when we have good amount of time, probably we can take it through that as well. So here you can see uh, we have this car data set, which I have read. We have done the same thing. Exactly the same thing is going to happen. Uh, we are going to read the data set. We are going to clean the data set. And uh, we do some data exploration as well. Uh, I have not covered that. This is basically some data exploration which is happening. Uh, uh, just probably skip it for now. And then uh, uh, we are dropping some of the data set and we are trying to recreate some feature that all comes under feature engineering. And again, uh, we have plotted some data and then we come up with some correlations. Again, uh, this is some heat map which is there. And again, if you can see, right, the data set iLock, we are uh, um, distributing into X and Y values because the input and the output values. What we have done is we already have the data of the historical data of the cars, which what are the different attributes of the cars and at what price it has been sold. So using that data, we can predict if you give the attributes to this particular model, it should predict. Now here, which uh, which uh, 
we have used algorithm this is extra tree regressor so today we have seen linear regression and k nearest neighbors so like that there are many algorithms right there are around 25 30 algorithms uh, which you have to learn and it works the exactly same way the way we have studied together uh, on this particular uh, the mathematics run behind it so every algorithm have a different mathematics so if you want to learn about it you just have to go to the scikit learn a documentation and it will explain you uh, what are the different uh, mathematics which is involved for this particular algorithm so the, it is using extra tree regressor it has a different uh, mathematics involved uh, here and then based on extra tree regressor it has done something and it has come again uh, train and test the model and it has come up with the prediction right so uh, one so it has trained and tested the model and uh, this is basically it is running the model and it has uh, predicted some values and what it has done is it, it has taken that model and it has make a kind of a pickle file for it right a pickle file is something right your model is completely there uh, everything which you have done above uh, you have taken that complete model and you have put it into one kind of a serialized object right and basically in, if you are aware about the java it's similar to that it's a serialized object which is available now instead of calling the entire code what you can do is you can this use this particular pickle file to use in your code so what i have done is i have uh, written one particular flask module uh, again the flask is a small lightweight framework for uh, python uh, which you can use and it will help you to uh, have a uh, for, uh, this uh, server itself the http server itself running on your local machine and you can get the ui very quickly so what i have done is i have read this particular model here because i have uh, deserialized it uh, using a write binary uh, parameter and then i have used this model now if you give this model the different attributes it will predict the output for you similar to what we have done today we have trained our model with experience and the salary similarly this model has been trained with different attributes of the car and its particular price now based on whatever attributes you provided to it it will give you the price of it uh, what is what what is the likely what is the likely price it should be sold on right the similar way we have done you know, we have given the different experience and salary and we asked for the uh salary for the 11 years of experience guy again this is some flask code uh, again it's http request url which say predict and this all this code has been written now if you want to run this if you just, just run this particular application this is a flask code which will run and it will generate a local uri for me so that i can run this particular on my local browser set so run so the idea of showing you this is because this is how the machine learning model runs behind the ui right uh, if you have made some model if you have made some model you can expose it through you through an api and you can write a small ui on top of it the way it has been written here and then you can do the same thing you just have to provide the parameters from the interface uh, from the user interface instead of providing it from the uh, from the console so this is how it looks like right uh, it's running on my local host uh, on port number 5000 and here you have to just give some details about it let's say i want to say 2008 model uh, it's um the showroom price was 9 lakh rupees it is uh, 20000 it has been driven as a first owner petrol dealer and a manual car calculate the selling price of it and you can see that you can sell the car at 3.33 lakhs what i have done i have done nothing i have just created my model my model is predicting some value i have written a small ui on top of it and it is giving me this results right so this project uh, uh, as i mentioned in my uh, creative as well that uh, this project will be available in the github the github link will be shared you can run this project on your local box and you can also see that itself so i think i am done with what i have to say uh, yaya bhai you can open the forum for question yeah, and answers okay. sure we uh, we can allowing the participants to unmute themselves so everyone can unmute themselves if they want to and if you want to share a feedback if you want to share a question please feel free to unmute yourself and do it hello am i audible yes abdul rahman you are audible yeah uh, assalam alaikum first of all okay so the first question which i have is we have multiple models as you just said murshid bhai um like regression cnn lstm and many models are there so which uh, like i know ke hum pata nahi kar sakte ke particular data set ke liye kaun sa model hame use karna chahiye kyunki aisa koi classification hai nahi but fir bhi agar 
हमें कोई पर्टिकुलर डेटा सेट के लिए सोचना है कि हमें स्टार्ट किस मॉडल से करना चाहिए लाइक like, एक तो हमारा क्लासिफिकेशन का ऐसा हो गया कि हमारा मॉडल डेटा कैसे है हमें यानी किस तरह करना है क्लासीफाई करना है या ऐसा तो मॉडल और डेटा के बीच में uh, किस तरह रिलेशन फाइंड करें I I okay. I hope you so, got my question. No, no, I got your question. question. So as I told you, right, um, what once you get the data set, right, you have to explore the data set. As you can show, right, in my data set which I have shown you for this car prediction, we have done some data exploration. So first, you have to do some correlation of the data. How data is related with the input and the output value? How they are related, right? Now, if you see the data seems to be linearly related, right? Then you can tend towards your linear regression model, right? Linear models. But if you see the data is not linearly related, right? Uh, you can you don't see that pattern happening, right? In the charts, the data exploration. Then you have to go and explore the different models like random forest, where you don't go for the uh, the linear linearity of the model, but different. It depends upon the attributes of the model, right? Now there are these these cases. It depends upon the data exploration. Now, second case is uh, you try with different models. You see what are the different uh, outputs you are getting from the different model, different accuracy state, and and then you can uh, if and then you can see the accuracy of different particular models, and then you can ensemble those models as well. Instead of one model, you can connect two models or three models, and then you can come up with the uh, proper output. Uh, with your current statement, another question arises that how to check the accuracy of models. Like one of the way which I know is dividing our data, past data, historical data into two sets, training and testing. But if we have a small data set, then what? Small data set has its own challenges, right? Then you have, then you have to, uh, what you can synthetically create the data for that particular data set. So there is there are options of creating the data synthetically, right? Because what will happen is it will tend to towards skewness, right? The data gets skewed. So you have to, there is an option, there are libraries available in Python where you can create the data synthetically if it's a small data set. And as you mentioned, the training and testing, um, today we have not covered that given the interest of time. So that's basically you take the data, you train your data on that, and then you test it, right? And then you can see how many data has been correctly classified and how many have not been classified. Based on that, you can check the accuracy of your model. Okay. Someone suggested use ROC. Can you elaborate it? It's basically the area under the curve rule, right? The, what happens, uh, how much area is getting under the curve, how much area you are correctly classifying, right? You can visually see that particular data. And when you see that particular visual experience, you can see, okay, you are tending towards the right model. But uh, this also has its own challenges. What you try to do with this training data, you try to overfit the data, right? Uh, that also comes up. But again, you have to ensure that you keep on validating the data and keep on churning the data with the right validation and the uh, grid search algorithms. Two more minutes. If we don't have any questions, then we'll cap the session. Uh, if anyone has a relevant question for Brother Murshid, please feel free to shoot us. Okay, uh, last question. Um, I was currently working with one of the data set uh, from IMD. Like uh, prediction systems are there for forecast. So I divided my data into the ratio of 60-40, but the point is, that uh, I downloaded the data from 1950 to 2021. It's a large data set to train the model. But if I'm dividing in the ratio of 60-40, then the 60% 60 data that is 1950 to 2000 is an old data uh, where another conditions as well arises. Like um, before 2000, the situation was different and now the situation is different. So uh, dividing the data, um, not in, by slicing it or Taking randomly, is there a way to do that? Yeah, definitely, right? Uh, this is a very basic use case in data science. So what happens is uh, when you take a data set and you go and divide it, let's say you mentioned 60, 40, uh, given the fact you have, let's say you have a data set of 100 rows and you have divided into 60 and 40. So what you think like the so first 60 data sets goes into your training and rest 40 goes into your uh, uh, testing one, right? 
but right. uh, uh, but what happens is uh, as you mentioned uh, you don't want that right you want each piece of your data set should go under the training and other piece of the data should come under testing because you don't want your uh, training model to be uh, get overfitted right so in that case you have this cross fold validations which is available that is one thing what it does is it takes each slices of your training set let's say 60 in the front and then 60 in middle 60 at the last and 60 in between it randomly it takes the data set and converts into the uh, your training set and also your testing set is also being adjusted respectively so that's one thing right that's cross fold validation that's called cross fold validation and you can also specify how many slices you want in that training and testing second thing is there is a grid search cv uh, this is again one of the uh, this thing uh, functions which is available in uh, this data science uh, toolbox you can say uh, apart from your cross fold validation it also helps you to with the algorithms as well so as that's one of your question right initial question which algorithm to use and how to check the accuracy the grid search cv help you to do that it's a basically a matrix uh, if you give a grid search cv uh, uh, mentioning that i want to do the testing with this particular take all these algorithms linear regression k n regression and let's say uh, other um, random forest or decision trees you give all these algorithms to the grid search cv and you also give your data set it will do a cross fold validation for you and it also find the best algorithm which will work on that particular data set i hope you answer the question yeah yeah thank you so much there is a question in chat box if you can take it if someone is interested in data science and machine learning is coding essentially needed uh, yes because you have to code and you have to run the model right and uh, the coding of the model usually happens in two languages r and python because these are the two very rich libraries uh, with algorithms so the thing is it's not like uh, you have to do the complete data structures and algorithms you have to know by hand and then you have only you can do it as i mentioned we have you have seen today right we have done some basic scripting but over a period of time as you go and do practice uh, you will get good hands on on it so you need to have some sense of coding to do that and and to be honest uh, you don't have to learn coding for it um yeah yeah bhai if you just give me two minutes i want to share something yeah please go ahead yeah so uh, let's say uh, let me share something right is this visible to everyone uh, this screen chat gpt yeah yes my favorite okay. one it's your favorite one good okay. let's let's see so uh, let's say core for linear model Okay, am I not signed in? We need to refresh it. It service always like that. Yeah, okay. Let's say code for linear regression model. so this is really good right whatever we have done today it helps you to do that completely so you don't have to think you have to don't have to google all you have to do is you have to wait this chat gpt will help you to write the code for you and uh, you just have to copy this code and you have to directly run it so what it has done is right uh, in fact for data set right we have to provide the data set it has taken the loaded the data set from the boston which is already available in python right and you can see it is also calculating the matrix and everything for you so let's do one thing right let's copy this code and see and try to run this Okay, the scale and it's all thing. Okay, what I've done, I've done nothing. I've just taken this data uh, from the chat GPT and trying to run this. I think it has some issues with loading a data set. Okay, it has removed. I think this chat GPT is <laughs> not updated yet because it is only till twenty twenty one. so this particular load boston is not available in skyguide learn now 
but uh, overall you must have got the picture right what i'm trying to say you, the code is already available to you and uh, you just have to put it in one of the chat gpt and it will generate the code for you and it will run that's it yeah yeah why that's what i want to share zakallah sahib urshit for this insightful session i guess uh, many people who joined in and must have learned something new today who are new to the machine learning please don't be scared be mushir uh, is available for uh, any doubts that you want to get clarified we have added most of you who had registered on our link of master class session to our whatsapp whatsapp class whatsapp group uh, in case you have not uh, been able to be registered and not been added uh, you can uh, ask the question on the master class group as well in case you are not added sorry let me complete that in case you are not added to the master class whatsapp group message me on Double eight seven nine five seven eight seven nine two. My name is Yahya Azhar, and we'll try to get you uh, added to the WhatsApp group. Uh, Zaid, your question is uh, because we are out of time. Uh, Murshid has hard stop at ten eight fifteen. Uh, I'm not uh, asking him to take your question, but what you can do is you can uh, get added to the master class group on a WhatsApp, and he will answer your question there. Uh, in case and like I said. Uh, I already have uh, explained and uh, shared the link for Master uh, PSF Mumbai. You can register yourself as a PSF member on the link which is shared in the chat box here. Uh, I'll share the link also on uh, Master Class Group. In case you are not a PSF member, you can register yourself there. Zakalla, here for joining in today for the Master Class session. Whenever we have an online session, we will be inshallah sharing the link with you guys again. Also, uh, uh, these sessions have been physical so far. And lastly, Brother Moshe, really uh, wonderful uh, session from your side. Zakallah khair for sparing your time for uh, the sessions uh, like this. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are closing session.